You know, a week ago we released our sneak peek of the 400 millimeter F4.5 SVR, but the studio stepped in as usual and they just cut out everything that was a little bit risque. The gore, the blood, the danger, the embargoed information. But now you are joining me to watch our director's cut, unrated, unfiltered, unedited. This has got all the stuff you've been waiting for. Check it out. You will not be disappointed. Welcome back to EPRV TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here. We're coming to you from a really interesting place. This is the Amnuska Wolf Dog Sanctuary, an amazing photo opportunity for wildlife here. We've got lots of mostly wolves to shoot and we've got a really good lens to shoot it on because we've got our hands on the brand new Nikkor Z 400 millimeter F4.5. This is very much like the same experience we had with the 800 millimeter PF in that it is a pre-production lens. You know, we can't really talk about image quality, but you'll be able to see the photos that we take here in the video at least. But there's a lot of interesting things to talk about on this lens. Let's get to it. So this really is like a stunningly beautiful sanctuary here. And one thing I've definitely learned is the content of dogs. It's like, I don't know, coffee or something. You get your low content wolf dog, your mid content wolf dog, your high content wolf dog, and all with varying degrees of domesticity and how docile they are. It's quite interesting. Of course, this is a pre-production lens, but being the camera detective as I am, I found this very unique script here that says this is an Icor Z 400 millimeter with a f4.5 maximum aperture. It is indeed VR and 95 millimeter filter thread. Huh? So I think we should get started with just the overall handling of this lens, the size, the weight, and what we can see on it. So the first thing I noticed using this 400 millimeter, it's actually very similar in its design layout to the 800 millimeter PF that we tested earlier. And that's a good thing because a lot of nice thoughtful features here. I do like that the hood is very easy to remove one handed just with that easy quick button there. Very simple. Looks like you have that customizable control ring, similar kind of layout there, buttons. As far as build quality goes, we do have a rubber ring on the back here on the lens mount. So I imagine it's going to be of a very similar build quality to that 800. The tripod color also looks very similar to what we saw in the 800 millimeter. Under the locking knob, you do have a Kensington lock there. Uh, it does not have the click stops on the 90 degrees, but a lot of people prefer it that way. I do like having the click stops. And yeah, we don't have that Arca Swiss cutout on the tripod color itself. So you'd be looking at attaching a separate plate for those kind of tripods. All right, so here's some hot content. We weren't able to mention the teaser video. You actually have a lot of custom buttons on here. So we've got function two buttons, four of them just ahead of the customizable ring here. On the back though, we have another standard customizable function button. Autofocus manual switch, of course. You do have a focus limiter six meters to infinity and a memory set button. But what we do not see here is actually VR control. That's interesting. Here, I do have to go into the menu and set that. That is gonna slow things down a little bit. While we're on the topic of the VR system, this is a six stop. VR system when you use it with the Nikon Z9, otherwise five and a half stops, very stable platform. All right, so we weren't able to mention it earlier, but now we've got the secret lowdown on the dimensions of this lens, the size and the weight, because that really is one of the main features of this lens. It is compact, 23 and a half centimeters long. This only weighs 1160 grams. That's 0.58 knocks. Again, it really does remind me of a Nikkor 7200 2.8 in sort of weight and size, very manageable. What else is interesting is that Nikon's doing that on this lens without using phase Fresnel optics. Now phase Fresnel optics would be absolutely beautiful. And on the 800 mil it works really well but it does add cost to the lens sometimes you get interesting compromises to the look of the bokeh and it can sometimes be prone to interesting flare as well but here we've got a traditional optical formula how do they get it so compact without using phase fresnel elements well they've done something very smart they're actually using uh, ed elements and sr elements and actually getting rid of a lot of the front heavy larger elements in the front of the lens and pushing that weight back to the rear of the lens they're doing most of their optical corrections for aberrations in the back of the lens here now that means that it's not only compact, but actually balances really nice under your shooting hand here quite close to the camera, especially on a Z9. So overall, this is why the design is so small and yet still so effective. I mean, focusing is actually very smooth, absolutely. I wouldn't say it's the fastest thing focusing lens that I've seen here. It still is quite smooth. And I think if you're focusing at telephoto ranges where the distances are fairly minimal, it's going to be nice and quick. But certainly from far to near, it does take just a little bit of time. I wonder what kind of focusing mode we actually have in this lens. 
Actually, because this is the director's cut, I can absolutely tell you what motor this has in it. It is a stepping motor, very much like we see in the 800 millimeter PF. So that's why we're getting that nice smooth focus, but maybe not the fastest way of pushing the elements. So of course, as we mentioned, this is a pre-production lens. I can't really like evaluate the RAWs or the JPEGs, but looking at the shots, especially this guy here, you've got these dandelions in the background. I'm actually really loving the bouquet on this particular 400 mil. I think I actually like the look of this better than the 800 mm PF that we looked at. It's very smooth, very gradual. I just think it's gorgeous. All right, so I just took some shots here at the sun just to see what we get. And as you can see, so I took some shots of it stopped down and wide open and you be the judge. Wait, this is the director's cut. Actually, I'll be the judge. So this lens has Nikon's excellent nano crystal coatings. I mean, I'm really not seeing much loss of contrast. It's handling flare very well. Wide open, not really getting much ghosting. Stop down, you do see a little bit of it shooting directly into the sun, but overall, it's good performance. So thank you for joining us for this bootlegged, ultra racy NC17 band in Australia. The video nasties in the UK version of this launch video 400mm f4.5 Nikkor lens. Also big thanks to the Yamnusco Wolf Dog Sanctuary for letting us shoot here. It was a fantastic experience and actually this focal length was perfect for what we were doing today. You know, it's really nice to see that Nikon now has a companion compact telephoto to their 800 series. I love the focal length here today. And you know, this actually reminds me a lot of what we would use in the SLR days where you have like 400 millimeter f5.6s, these more compact, more affordable telephoto lenses and size-wise is actually very similar, but we're getting f4.5 with basically the same size. Now the price is 3250 USD and actually that works out really well. I mean, if you adjust for inflation, that's basically what those 400 millimeter 5.6s went for back in the day. So we have an affordable, compact, but very effective prime lens. I think it's gonna be a fantastic lens. I can't wait to try it out when we have a full version to play with. As always though, we appreciate you watching our videos. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think about this. Please subscribe, like the channel. We'd appreciate that. And otherwise, thank you so much. We'll join you soon for another Deep Review TV episode.